So what we're covering tonight is simple interest. So simple interest is going to be your first introduction into calculating interest. Next week, we'll cover promissory notes and simple discounting, which is uh, kind of like a reverse way of calculating interest, where instead of just calculating interest on top of what you borrow, it's basically deducted ahead of time, and then you, your principal value is lower than the actual um, amount that you agreed to borrow, so that way you pay back exactly what you borrowed. Um, We'll also talk about treasury notes and things like that. Then we'll move into present value calculations. So present value calculations uh, are going to allow for you to determine kind of what the value of something is five years from now, 10 years from now, two months from now, based on today's numbers or vice versa. So the reason why we have interest is because of the fact that um, it's our cost of borrowing money. So the problem with is there's a lot of risk for someone to lend someone a lot of money. So in order for it to be worth the risk, there needs to be some return on investment, but that return on investment is not just, ex uh, is not just exclusively based on how much profit they wanna make. It's also factoring in inflation because due to inflation, the value of a dollar today is gonna be substantially, or maybe not so substantially, but most likely substantially, particularly given how much inflation we have in the economy right now, is gonna be worth substantially less than the day it was lent out. So if something is worth a dollar today, it might be, a dollar might be worth 96 cents in a couple of years. And so if you borrow 20,000, you pay back 20,000, the actual purchasing power of the 20,000 you gave back to the bank is less than the value of it when they gave it to you. And thus uh, they're actually losing money, even though technically on paper, they're making the same amount of money back. So, um, and then we'll talk about depreciation and then basically chapters 12, 17 and 18 are kind of giving you an insight into accounting. Um, which is why I don't know if any of you are taking accounting yet, but if you take accounting in your uh, in the winter or next term or next summer, or next fall, you'll be taking that with Professor Daryl Green. Um, so he teaches some of the other business math sections because a lot of this stuff kind of speaks to more of the accounting side. Um, and I've added in a couple chapters since I'm the econ guy uh, to cover apologize for the loud car noises in the background. Uh, I don't have my, my dampening mic today. So, uh, but anyways, um, so the business stats chapter at the end of the course, that'll be around Thanksgiving and the chapter about equations, that stuff that's more economics related. But so there are more complicated ways to calculate interest beyond what we're going to learn tonight. We'll get to those as the semester progresses, but just for a a uh, quick introduction into interest and how to calculate it in different ways to get you comfortable with it. We're going to start uh, with that this evening. So our um, roadmap and objectives or our goal is to make sure that you know how to calculate interest and maturity values. So um, I'm not quite sure if there's an actual definition, but I'll so I'll mention it now, but um, if there isn't, but if it's in there, I'll talk about it again. When you get into the business world and the securities world and like stocks and bonds, you get into this terminology about maturity. And basically what maturity means is when you borrow money, when you pay it back, that is the maturity date. So there are different ways in which you can pay somebody back. You can pay them all at once which is kind of what the standard is kind of in the more business world and bond world. In the personal world, we're more used to incremental payments. So mortgages and car loans, you pay a specific amount every single month or every few weeks um, until the whole loan is paid off. But in our, um, but in the corporate world and in the bond world, it's usually uh, basically all paid back at once. So imagine um, buying a car for $20,000 and instead of paying a few hundred dollars a month, you get it for free 
but five years from today, you have to pay $20,000 plus interest back to the bank. Well, that's cool, I guess, in the short term, because you're like, sweet, like, I don't have to pay anything. But the thing that stinks about that is that you now have to save up $20,000 for a car that you're already using, already driving, already depreciating. And whereas instead of paying like a few hundred dollars a month and then it, and then the amount you owe is kind of like equivalent to what you, what it's worth. Uh, instead, you're basically paying the first day value of the car five years from today. And so that's not really that appealing. But the reason why corporations like to pay it all at once is because of the fact that typically when they borrow money in the form of a bond or with a promissory note, it becomes a security that they can sell on an open market. So if I promise to pay you 10,000 plus interest three years from today on October 20th, 2024, um, the person that I owe that money to could sell that financial instrument to somebody else for something less than $10,000, but it gives them the freedom to have that money now instead of sitting and waiting for me to pay it back. And then whoever holds it is who I give the money to, not the person that I originally borrowed from. So that's why maturity values and things that we're going to talk about tonight are the way they are, because it's basically saying that one time when you pay everything back, what is the cost that you are paying or what's the dollar amount of what you're paying to them? So um, there's three types of interest. They're all pretty similar. They're all just using different kind of time measurements. So simple interest uses months or years. Uh, exact interest uses and ordinary interest uses days minus uh, days in a year minus five, so 360 uh, for more simplistic calculations by saying each month is like 30 days. Um, and then we'll just kind of take the formula, rearrange it just like we always do to find different, find all of the missing values if you have the other values. And then lastly, um, uh, we'll talk about how partial payments before the due date are calculated in terms of the credits on interest. So like if you have a car loan and you make like principal payments on it uh, before the full payment is due, it's gonna take off some of the interest. So we'll talk about how that's credited. Um, does anybody have any questions? So um, I'm guessing the message wasn't for me. So, uh, um, so maturity value, as I mentioned before, uh, when we talk about maturity, we're basically saying uh, the day it's due or kind of the final total. So this is the like total amount paid and the other or it's and the maturity usually means like when the final payment is made personal loans mortgages Those tend to be paid over time, incrementally. And then uh, commercial loans, bonds, those tend to be paid once at the end. So personal loans, typically you want to pay it incrementally. Uh, I mean, I guess a mortgage you wouldn't necessarily have to, but they have to like kind of make sure that you're 
going to pay it back at some point. The companies, I guess they trust them, but it's also because then they can repackage and sell it. Although part of the reason why we had the financial crisis in 2008 was mortgages were packaged into securities. And then uh, so it incentivized people to loan out as much as they could, get their closing fees and their closing cost profits, and then sell off that mortgage off to somebody else, whether the person could pay it back or not was inconsequential because they made their money on the fees. And then lots of people who couldn't afford houses were getting houses, not paying them. And then it triggered all of the mess that we had in 2008. Um, but anyways, long story short, this is uh, the maturity value is just our total amount that we're paying, which is the sum of the amount that you borrowed. So the amount that you borrowed is called the principal. And then the amount of interest, which is the cost of borrowing money. So again, the face value amount of the loan. So if you take out a $15,000 loan, you get $15,000. But the amount you pay back, which is the maturity value, is the $15,000 that you borrowed, plus the interest, which is the cost of borrowing which is a combination of the profit taking for the firm and inflation considerations. So if you take macroeconomics with me, we'll talk about the real interest rate versus the nominal interest rate. And so you'll determine, okay, what's my actual cost of borrowing when I factor in inflation? So the simple interest formula is pretty uh, simple. <laughs> Basically, this is going to be, I don't really like how this is worded. It's more of a decimal than a percent when you calculate it. Um, but basically the simple interest formula, so know how we each time we had like ratio portion base for all the other calculations, we're gonna kind of have the same thing here. We're gonna have P is principal, R is rate. The rate, the interest rate that you pay is always measured as a percentage of the amount that you borrow. But when you're actually doing the math, it's a decimal. So that's why I crossed out what I crossed out. And then the time, uh, it depends on our analysis. Uh, it's usually stated in years. So if you are measuring in months, then your denominator for the fraction for years is going to be based in 12. If it's uh, days, then it depends. It could be 365 or 360, but depending on whether it's ordinary or exact. Um, and then if it's just full number of years, then you don't have to worry about it. It's just a full, full number. So this example says that Hope Slater borrowed 40,000 for office furniture. The loan was for six months at an annual interest rate of 4%. So what was Hope's interest rate and majority value? So um, the interest rate, again, is it's gonna be the amount of interest in dollars is going to just be multiplying all these together. So 40,000 is the principal. Remember the interest rate's 4%, but we gotta convert that to a decimal. So we move over two spots and we get 0.04. And then six months is not a year. So we wanna determine how much of a year that is. Six over 12 is equal to one half. So this is 40,000 times 0.04 times 0.5, which turns out to be $800. So maturity value, again, the maturity value is the principal, which is 40,000, plus the interest that is borrowed, which is 800. So our maturity value is going to be $40,800. So any questions about that so far? So again, simple interest, this is in years, this is an interest rate stated as a percent, but calculated 
as a decimal. And then this is the initial, this is the amount of money that you're borrowing. So dollars, decimals, years. So think about that, dollars, decimals, years. Dollars times decimals times years, which could also be a decimal, but just depends on what the ratio is. So if Hope borrowed $40,000 still again, but the loan was for one year at a rate of 4%, what would be the interest and maturity value? Well, in this case, all you're doing is 40K times the 0.04, but since it's a full year, it's just one. So you would get 40,000 times one is 40,000 divided by 25, which is going to give you, I think, 1200 $1,600. And then our maturity value is just going to be the sum, 40,000 plus 1,600, which gives us $41,600. Voila. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. So we'll try this again, even though the interest has been spoiled. So again, uh, now we're gonna do it for 18 months. Uh, so the interest is just going to be, see this never changed, this never changed. We're just changing this since it's 18 months. There's 12 months in a year, do 18 over 12. So you get 1.5 times 0.04 times 40,000. So 1.5 times 40,000 is 60,000 divided by 25. 60,000 divided by 25 should give you $2,400. And then you just again add 40,000 to 2,400. And that gives you 42,400 as your maturity value. So hopefully that one makes sense. It's just simple interest is as simple as it gets. You just take your interest rate, multiply it times the, because I guess one thing that I can clarify is that the interest rate is measured as is it's considered like an APR, annual percentage rate, uh, or annual per, or average percentage per year depends on how it's phrased. But basically, what the interest rate is over one whole year. Uh, so for simple interest. Uh, well, actually, for all of these, we're measuring it in years, but we're just going to break it down as a proportion of the year. Um, I get what you're saying. So, you're probably think you might be thinking about this in terms of compounding, uh, which we have we aren't getting to yet. But uh, when it gets to like compounding. Uh, the interest is calculated based on what's still owed, not based on the initial principal value. So that's where the difference between simple interest and compounding is, is that simple interest is just comparing it. So uh, the rate is, so when you compound, the rate is whatever. It could be continuous, it could be monthly, it could be yearly, but uh, the 4% is the percentage of the loan, but if you get an actual loan, it'll say, oh, this is our, my APR, APY. So it's basically saying, okay, well, every year I'm paying 4%. Which is why, um, which is why the, if you just take, which is why the actual amount of interest keeps growing. Because if you take point, if you take 4%, times 40,000, 
that's just sixteen hundred dollars. So technically, it you would think, okay, well, if I'm paying four percent, it should only be sixteen hundred dollars in interest that I'm paying. But what it's doing is it's it's saying that for every year, or if you paid it off in a year, it'd just be four percent. If you pay off in less than a year, it's less. Uh, but if you continue waiting and waiting and waiting to pay it off, the longer you wait, the more interest you pay, which means the more that you end up paying back. And that's for two reasons. One is because uh, of discounting. And the second reason is because of um, discounting because of inflation. The second reason is because of profiting. So even though this is taking more than a year, the process is still the same, but that's why the actual amount of interest you end up paying back is more than just 4% of the principal because of the fact that it's taking more than a year. I hope that answers your question. If, it, if you still want more clarification, just feel free to ask or drop in the chat. So uh, there's two methods for um, calculating simple interest. Uh, one is called exact interest and the other one is called ordinary interest. So exact interest is used by the federal government and the Federal Reserve Bank. And what it does is instead of going like uh, taking it as a ratio of the year in months or years, it, it breaks it down into days. So like if you, so the difference here is if you paid off your loan in a month with the traditional simple interest calculation, you would do one twelfth because it's one month. Makes sense. But with the exact interest calculation, if you pay off your loan in February, it's 28 over 365. If it's February in a leap year, it's 29 over 365. If it's March, it's 31 over 365. If it's April, it's 30 over 365. All of those are different ratios, right? None of that one over 12 is effectively, I think, uh, 30 over 360, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, 29 over 365, 28 over 365, that's 7.94%. I believe this one was like 8.25% of the year. So these would be less than that. 31 over 365 is 8.5%. So this would be more. And 30 over 365 is 8.2. So this one's also less. So that's why you're going to get different answers when you use exact interest versus ordinary interest versus uh, the simple interest calculation that we just did. Is for the simple interest calculation we just did, it was a ratio relative to the full year uh, in terms of like our standard knowledge of that there's 12 months. But if we use this calculation, unless we're paying something off in a month that is 31 days, uh, we actually end up paying a lower effective interest rate uh, using the days instead of the months as a proportion of the year. It's still a proportion of the year, but we're parsing it down into smaller units. So just as a reminder, 1 over 12, 8.25%, 31 over 365, 8.49%, and then 30 over 365, 29 over 365, 28 over 365. All of these are less than that, which is less than that.
So let's use the exact interest method. So if Joe Bench borrows 50,000 at 5%, well, again, we convert this to a decimal, so it's 0 0.05. Interest and principal are due on July 6th. What are the interest costs and maturity value? Well, there's 31 days in March, so this would be 28 plus, oops. So it'd be 28 plus 30 in April, 31 in May, 30 in June, plus six in July. So if we add that up, I guess it's saying 27 because it's not counting the first day of the loan. 27 plus 30 is 57, plus 31 is 88, plus 35 is 140. Where, what am I doing wrong here? Where are we getting 124 from? Ah, oh, that's right. I just did bad math. I said 35, not 30. There's not 35 days in June. So yeah, that's right. Uh, so 27, 30, 67, 98, or 88, sorry, 118, 124. There we go. So <laughs> all that best just to calculate the number of days, 124 goes here, divide by 365. So if we do 50,000 times 0 0.05, that's 50,000 over 20, which gives you 2,500 times 124 over 365, and that gives you about $849.31 and change, and they rounded it up to 849.32. Maturity value, again, is just interest plus uh, principal. So it's 50,000 plus 849, oops, 849.32 which gives you 50,849.32. So any questions about that? Really the only difference now is instead of dividing by years or divvying it up based on months, you're basing it on days relative to 365. I guess uh, their methodology of calculating the number of days is what day of the year it is. So I guess July 6th is the 187th day of the year and March 4th is the 63rd which I guess technically makes it easier to avoid making mistakes. But that's if there isn't a leap year. If it's leap year, then it would be 366. Second math uh, method is ordinary interest, which is 360 days. Again, these animations are wacky. But the difference is your denominator is 360. It's basically assuming that each month is 30 days. So you might think, oh, well, that's going to be the same as uh, the original simple interest, which is wrong because if you have a 31-day month, it's 31 over 360, which is greater than 1 12th. You have 28 over 360, it'll be less. 29 over 360, it'll be less. 30 over 360, it will be the same. What I always find interesting is we always say that like a month is 30 days, but only one third of the months have 30 days. 
seven of them have 31 and one of them is 28, sometimes 29. So it's interesting to me that we use an average that is actually less common. Um, is less common than, uh, than common than what we say it is. Just an aside. <laughs> um, but anyways, really the only difference is just the number of days. So if I say ordinary 360, exact 365. So ordinary 360, exact 365, simple uh, twelfths or years. So basically simple interest treats each month as an equivalent exact interest and ordinary interest uh, uses days as well, but treats each month as three. So how does the interest change when we have the same problem, but instead of us using 365 days, we have 360. So we already know that this is 124 days. So it'll be 124 over 360. 124 divided by 360, which is 0 0.3444 repeating, times 0 0.05 times 50,000. That will give us our interest. This is E, this is R, this is T. So when we do that, we get $861.11. And uh, if we want to calculate a maturity value, just add 50,000 to 861. So it turns out that our interest is going to go up, which should make sense because if our denominator is smaller, then that means the fraction's bigger. Because if 124, if we're comparing 124 over 365, and 124 over 360, this one is larger, so it's going to create more interest. So banks are greedier than the Federal Reserve. That's the takeaway from this. So any questions about that? Hoping that that's manageable. It's the same equation, just using different numerical relationships. And you might think that's silly and, and uh, not that big of a deal, but the reason why we're teaching it is because different institutions use different uh, calculation methodologies. So if you're an accountant, that's going to be important. Um, also, if it's a lot of money, that's important. So this person had to pay an extra $12. I mean, that might not seem like a lot for 50 grand, but if it was like say fifty million dollars, you might be kid, you might be interested in uh, in whatever that times a thousand. So that would be twelve grand that you would be losing, which seems pretty uh, remarkable to me. So uh, This one is saying uh, that Dawn Crystal borrowed 15,000 at 8%. Interest and principal are due on August 10th. Now we can calculate these using both of these methods. So remember exact is gonna be 365, ordinary is 360. And what we have to do is we have to compare uh, the amount of time that has elapsed. So if we do 31, 28, 30, whoops, 31, 30, 31, then we know that May 4th is on 59, 94. So this is day 94. 31, 28 is 59. Actually, it's more than that. 59, 90, 124. This is day 124. 
And then August, so we get 30, 31, 31. So you're at 120 here, 181, 212, uh, 222. 222 minus 124 gives you 98, I believe. So that means that our calculation for exact is going to be 15,000 times 0 0.08, because we're converting this to a fraction, times 98 over 365. And then for ordinary, we're doing 15,000 times 0 0.08 times 98 over 360. Hopefully, I did the days correct. So there you go, 322.19 for exact. And if we want to calculate the maturity value, we're just adding that 322 on. So it's just going to be 15,000, 322.19. And then for ordinary interest, it's 98 over 360. So we're going to get 326.67 which means the maturity value is going to be 15,000, And so we see from this that this is cheaper, less interest, more interest. Not by a lot, but it can add up if you get a big, big borrowing. So the difference is what, like $3 and $4 and 58, 48 cents. So you pay an extra 448 in interest with this one. Any questions about that? What if we want to find the principal value? If we're given I and we're given R and we're given T, how do we find P? Well, again, if P is equal, or excuse me, not P. If I is equal to P times R times T, then to find P, we just divide R times T, move it to this side, so we get P by itself. So that's what we have here. Principal is equal to interest divided by rate times time. So if Tim Jarvis paid the bank $19.48 in interest, so we plug that in here, if it will let me, and the interest is 9.5%, so we get 0 0.095 times 90 over 365. Oh, actually, we're using ordinary interest, so it's actually going to be 360, not 365. Then if we plug this all in, we get an answer. Now, uh, can 90 over 360 be reduced to something per? Can this becomes one fourth, which is 0.25. So really, this is 19.48 over 0.095 times 0.25. And so, what is 0.095 times 0.25? That's 0.02375. Nineteen forty-eight over that. Should give you about eight hundred and twenty dollars and twenty one cents.
And again, this is 0.25. Remember, this is the principal amount. That's how much, that's the actual amount of money that Tim borrowed. That's not the interest that he paid. He paid 1948 in interest, but when you factor in the interest rate and the amount of time that he borrowed it for, it turns out that he borrowed $820.21. which means that the maturity value of this is $830.69. Or Any questions about how we can calculate that? We're just rearranging the original equation. So we have the, there's, there's a PERT with an E equation for compounding continuously interest. This is the, Pert, I guess, equation. You just move it around and solve for whatever you need to solve for. So now we want to find R. So if P, or excuse me, if it's the Ippert equation, we have the Pert equation, which is the continuous one. I forgot that this is the Ippert equation, not the Pert equation. It's the Ippert equation. You want to find rate, well, then you need to isolate R by itself. So you divide by P times T, bam, bam, divide by P times T. So it's the interest divided by the principal times time to find your interest rate, which should make sense because the interest is going to be a proportion of your principal, but it could be higher if the amount of time that you borrow it for is longer than one year. So if Tim Jarvis borrows 820.21 from a bank, which we confirmed in the previous uh, slide, and his interest is 1948 for 90 days, what is the interest rate that he is paying? We go back to the previous slide. We know he was paying this interest and we found what the principal was, but now we're trying to find this. We already know it's going to be 9.5%, but we can confirm that with the calculation that we have because we're still using the ordinary interest method, which is the 360 version. So if R is equal to I over P times T, we know that this is 1948 and this is 821. 21 times 0.25, because it's one fourth of a year, then we get 19 point, oh, excuse me, we get 820.21 times 0.25. We get 205.05, so 19.48 over 205.05 gives us hopefully approximately 9.5%. It does. It gives us exactly 9.5%. Well, it's really 0 0.095, which I've converted to 9.5%. And then you can check it with the original Ippert equation. So any questions about this? Now we can calculate time again, Ippert. Now we're dividing by P times R. So I over P times R determines the time in years. So if Tim borrows the 821, we know that they're borrowing, it's 1948 over 90 days. How long was the loan? Well, it's 0.25 years. I think that this was a, uh, I think this was a typo in the in the in the example, because we are we're trying to figure this out. <laughs> um, if we want to convert this to days, but I think this was supposed to say 9.5 percent interest not for 90 days because we already 
where that's what we're trying to figure out. So if you know the rate is 9.5%, which I'm adding in here, which is converted to 0.095 because of the uh, decimal, principles 8, 20, 21. So you do 1948 over 8, 20, 21 times 0 0.095. You get 0 0.25, and that's the number of years. If you're using the ordinary method to convert it to days, you do 0 0.25 times 360. If we had used the exact, then it would be so clean. So any questions about how to calculate that? I apologize for the example being written poorly. It should read that Tim's interest is 1940 and his interest rate is 9.5%. And then how long was the loan using the ordinary interest method in years? It's 0.25 years. If you want to convert it to days using the ordinary method, then it's 0.25 times 360, which is 90 days, which is what we've gotten all along. So any questions, concerns about this? Okay. What about making partial payments? So the US rule says that the partial loan payment covers any interest that has been built up first. And then once that's paid off, then the remainder goes towards the principal. So if you have like a mortgage, and you just take it out. So let's say that you have like a $200,000 mortgage. And let's say you have a 3% interest rate. Uh, if you look at your monthly payment, the first thing that comes off is the interest, which is probably really high at the beginning because of your like negative amortization and things like that. So you're probably paying, let's say, I don't know, 500 in interest. Then you're paying. I don't know, 300 in principal, and then you have your escrow. So escrow could be taxes, EMI if you have it, insurance if you have it, depends on the loan. So that's the rule in the United States. So uh, that makes sure that the borrower uh, gets the proper credit on their interest. So like you might want the principal to be paid off quicker because then that would mean that your interest would be generated on a smaller principal amount. But the problem that happens with that is that um, let's say that you pay down that principal, well that interest you didn't pay it off yet, so that's still gonna that's gonna compound still, so it doesn't really uh, benefit you. Although the sooner you can pay off your principal, the better. So like with student loans and things like that. Uh, but anyways, that's the rule in America. So if Jeff Edsel owes 5,000 on a 4% 90-day note, but on day 50, Joe pays $600 on the note. On day 80, he makes an additional $800 payment. If this is a 360 day year, so we're using the ordinary method here, what is the ending balance due? So what that means is the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the interest from the date of the loan to the date of the first payment. So, what that means is that we have to calculate the accrued interest on day 50 of this loan. So if it's a simple interest loan with the ordinary method, we're going to do 5,000 times 0 0.04 times 50 over 360. And that gives you $27.78 which means that the first 2778 is going to go towards interest and then the remaining 57222 is going to go to the principal so we subtract 57222 and we're left with $4,427.78. 
which is what we have. Bam. Next, we need to, I don't know what, these slides are crazy. So now we need to figure out the second one. So now we have to calculate the interest on the adjusted balance that starts from the previous payment. So now that um, we're making a second payment, we have to determine how much interest accrued over the next 30 days. Well, it kind of resets because we already paid the interest of the first 50 days. And since the principal amount is lower, we're taking the interest on the, on the amount that remains. Because you've already paid the interest on the first $72, so you're not punished for paying some of it off sooner. You're actually benefiting and crediting. So you don't have to pay interest on that amount anymore, but you still have to pay a, a, a interest on the principal amount that remains. So 4% times 30 over 360, because that's the, the amount of time that accrued between the first payment and the second payment, which means that $14.76 in interest has accrued, which means you have to pay that off first. So from your $800 minus your $14.76, you get $785.24 taken off. So $785.24 comes off the principal. So you're now left with $3,642.54. And that is not quite what he owes because you still have to calculate the interest that accrues over the last 10 days. So you have 36.42.54 times 0 0.04 times 10 over 360. And the, that will give you the remaining interest you add that to the principal amount, and that will be the final amount that is owed to the bank on the date of maturity. And I'm getting about $4.05. It was 4.047, so I'll round it up to 4.05. So that means that's the final interest payment that is owed, and then the principal that's due add it together, this is how much that Jeff Edsel will have to pay on the final day. So if we factor all that in, so Jeff paid 36.46.59 plus uh, 1400. So the total amount that Jeff Edsel ended up paying was $5,046.59. That's the total amount that, that's the, the maturity value that Jeff paid. Now go ahead and calculate for me what the amount Jeff would have paid if he paid it all on the 90th day. So go ahead and calculate that. Drop in the chat. If Jeff Edsel used the ordinary rule and just waited until the day it was due on night, day 90 to pay everything back, how much would he have paid compared to how much he's paying when he's doing these partial payments? So just to set it up to help you out, first you need to calculate interest that you would pay, which is going to be E times R times T. So you would have 5,000 times 0 0.04 times 0 0.25, because it's 90 over 360. And that'll give you your interest payment. And then the maturity value is going to be 50,000 or excuse me, 5,000 plus the interest. 
So when you do this, did anybody get the answer? So for this, you're going to get, yes, someone uh, messaged me $5,050. That is the correct answer for the maturity value. Because when you plug in this, you get 50 bucks. You add 50 in for here. And you end up getting 50-50 as your answer. So by making those partial payments, it's not a lot, but he ended up saving himself $3.41 in interest. Uh, when I paid off my second car, that uh, I sold my first car to pay off that one, but when I paid off my second car, I was making extra payments in the middle of the month. And I, you would, it would tell me how much interest that was chopped off the end of the loan. Now I have a zero interest car loan, so I don't have any math to do. So all this math that you have to do by having loans, I don't have to do that anymore, so yay. But on my mortgage, I definitely have to, so. So any questions about this? So I think all of the simple interest stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, as long as you have that one equation, you can rearrange it and find whatever you're looking for. And then when you do partial payments, you just have to remember that you have to pay off the interest first, then you pay off the principal, then you, for whatever interest that accrues after that, it's based on the new principal, not the old principal, and it starts over from the date of the last payment. So let's just do a couple examples here. So let's calculate interest and maturity value for the following problem. So if the principal is 9,000 and we're using months here instead of uh, days, interest rate is 0 0.021, 0 0.0214, 0 0.0225, sorry. I got tricked there for a second. And then 18 over 12. So that's like one and a half years. That will give you the interest rate. And then the maturity value will be 9,000 plus I. So if we do 9,000 times 0 0.0225 times 1.5, we get $303.75 as the interest. So if we plug that in there, we should get 9,303.75. Any questions about solving that problem? Doki. So what about this one? So we're using ordinary interest. So we're gonna use 360 as our date. So what we wanna figure out is uh, the amount of days we paid, the amount of interest and the maturity value. So to determine this, we gotta compare. So we have 31, 28, 30. So this is day 67 and then uh, this very, very special day uh, is 30, 31, 30. So we have 59, 90, 121, 51, 160. So does anyone know what's so special about that day? Why I circled it. One sixty minus sixty seven should give you ninety three for here. No one knows what's so special about June the ninth. No one wants to guess. I know math isn't the funnest thing in the world, but got to help me out here. 
I just looked it up and all I can find is that it, there's 205 days remain to the end of the year. I appreciate you looking it up. Uh, the reason why it's so special is because it's my birthday. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm shocked it's not in Wikipedia. <laughs> but yeah, it's also uh, Natalie Portman's birthday, if that matters to anybody, and if, if I'm not important enough. I think it's Johnny Depp's birthday, too. I don't know about the other famous people that have that birthday, but uh, but I was hoping that <laughs> someone might figure it out. But yeah, uh, so, but doing all that in 205 days till the end of the year, it's actually really useful that you said that because if it's 365 minus 205, that confirms that this 160 is the correct answer. So there was usefulness in having you look that up. So, uh, now that we know that this is 93, uh, we can plug in 93 over 360 for uh, 93 over 360 for our T value. And then if this is 8%, we convert it to 0 0.08. And then our principal is 1,000. So we get our interest is 93 over 360 times 0.08 times 1,000. And we get about $20.67 as our interest. And then our maturity value is just 1,020, 67. Any questions about solving that one? Okay, just wanna make sure everyone has a chance to copy it down. I can't remember if I made this one or a different problem, one of the homework problems, so. So now we're going to use exact interest instead of ordinary. So ordinary uses 360, exact uses the 365. So we have the exact same problem. So we know this is 93. We know it's 1,000. We know it's 0 0.08. We know it's 93. But now we're dividing by 365. So we're going to get a slightly different answer. So 93 divided by 365 times 0 0.08 times 1,000 gives us 2038 as our interest, which would make our maturity value 10, 20, 38. Any questions about that? Sorry about the moving it backwards accidentally on the table. So really it's just one equation again, and then the maturity value is adding the interest plus the principal. And the next chapter next week, we'll kind of work it backwards where we calculate the interest first, deduct that immediately from the principal value and then you uh, get whatever is left over as your loan. That's called simple discounting. Uh, so let's solve for the missing item in the following and round to the nearest hundred. So in this case, we're looking for time. So if I equals PRT, 
then we're finding this. So we need to multiply I over PR. So if I is 100 and P is 400 and uh, the interest rate is 0.05, then we end up with 100 over 200. Oops, no, 100 over 20, my bad. And we get I think five years. You do get five years. Oops. And if you wanted it in months, it would be sixty months. So does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so that's the lecture for today. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take our break as usual. And so I'll give us about a nine minute break. We'll return at 625. And then when we return from the break, have any questions about any of the homeworks or the, the first exam. And I'll be happy to answer them and go over them just for so you feel comfortable and, and clarified on what you might have missed, what you might not have understood. So uh, we'll reconvene at 625.